It is time for the news, and you may know that I've sort of become Top Gear's official map correspondent, and people have now started sending stuff in for me for the show, which is great. Things like this. You know you can go onto the website of the RAC on the internet to get hold of a route. It's a route plan. Well, yeah. Anne Marshall did exactly that, and she's wrote to tell us about it. She said she tried to get from Nottingham to Biddeford. That's okay. in Surrey. More sort of Devon, mate. But she put in that she wanted to avoid using the M5. Which is fair enough, because sometimes you want to avoid a particular motorway yeah. for whatever reason. Who would like to see the route that the RAC route planner advised her to take? <laughs> Here it is. There's Nottingham. <laughs> no, because in fairness, it does avoid the M5. It's across through Ireland, yeah. France, and there you are. Exactly. But well, we did actually check this out. We almost put it up. We did check it out, and that is genuinely what you come up with. There's even a route thing. Well, it's quite there? a good system. You don't just get the map, you get written instructions as well, which you could maybe keep next to you in the car. This is it. <laughs> I could you not? This is the route. There's a good. Where's it go? You are continuing. You are entering Cork. <laughs> you are leaving the United Kingdom and entering France. <laughs> to Devon. I think that's absolutely brilliant. Thank you for sending that. No, really thank you. And if anybody can be bothered to look on the internet and find uh, one that's more stupid than this, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, write to us at uh, I asked the RAC for a route to Kings Lynn and now I'm on the International Space Station. <laughs> uh, BBC uh, Top Gear 201 uh, Wood Lane London W1270 S. Hey, 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 hey. Now, the other day, okay, I was driving along behind a BMW Z4, roof down bloke driving along, okay? Uh, and he had a bit of a comb over, okay? Now, as he accelerated onto the M40, his speed built up. <laughs> he got lift off. Yeah, he got lift off. Now, he's thinking, I look like Tom Selleck in this car. <laughs> it's kind of like a pedal bin. Put his foot down on the pedal. <laughs> Anyhow, it gave me an idea, okay? I thought, what if the Z4 is particularly bad for that? And what would be the best sports car, convertible, if you've got a bit of a Charlton going on there? That's a good question. So we are looking for volunteers. <laughs> if you've got a comb over and you'd like to know which sports car is best, get in touch with us, please. And I'm being serious, no silly addresses, BBC Top Gear. 201 Wood Lane, London W1270S. Mark your envelope, I've got a bit of a Charlton. <laughs> I'm not joking, we have the most important piece of news ever to reveal yep. to the Top Gear audience. <clears throat> Top Gear, this pokey motoring show on yes. BBC Two, this week, won, I've got it here, <laughs> in New York, <laughs> an Emmy! We did! We won an Emmy! <laughs> That is an Emmy. Yeah. What this is for, okay, it's for the best non-scripted entertainment show that wasn't made in America. Yes, That's indeed. us. <laughs> Why didn't you go to the ceremony to pick that up? Well, because I was writing the script for Did this you? week's show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The thing is, though, when The Office, you remember the sitcom series thing, when that won some Golden Globes recently, yeah. the whole of the BBC ground to a halt whilst everyone said congratulations, and they were showered with, like, gifts and gold and diamonds they were. The and Director General of the BBC spent a week rubbing warm pig fat into Ricky Gervais. Yes, he did. <laughs> he did. He did. So... How many chocolate-covered lap dancers do you think have been sent to us? How many do you reckon? Not a damn thing. Nothing! <laughs> and if you think that's outrageous, then please write to us, as of Monday, to Top Gear, Channel 4 Television, yes, yes. <laughs> 124 Horsfree Road, London SW1. Oh, now, uh, on average, every year, four people crash into my garden. Four? Four. That's more than the national average. It is, you're Not right. Not many people have that many people crash into their front garden. Gets worse. This week, two. Two in a week. In one week? Two in a week. And I think the problem is, they know I live there, and they're sort of, hey, look at me, look at me. And the problem is, OK, can I just explain this? I have been driven round Fiorano in a Ferrari by Michael Schumacher. That was impressive. Watching a Vauxhall Nova bouncing across my front <laughs> lawn doesn't float my boat. There's a perfectly simple explanation for this. You bought a house on a tight bend, mm -hmm. didn't you? What have you been doing for the last 15 years? Driving around tight bends on television going, power! <laughs> and then you 
surprised when you wake up and there's a Peugeot 106 in your potting shed. That's I a good name. Be. Thank you, James, thing. for that one. You know those mail order catalogues, yeah? Yeah. Well, they always wave goodbye to the misery of whatever it is. Well, you can now wave goodbye to the misery of putting the wrong type of fuel in your car. Because you know diesel's really quiet now and it's easy to forget. Well, there's a new thing, okay? You open up your petrol filler cap, light gets in there. When light hits it, ready? This vehicle runs on diesel fuel. <laughs> Every time you open the fuel filler. Every time you do it. How much do you want this broadcasting across a petrol <laughs> floor? No, I mean, I'm a tight one. I've got a diesel. That would be me. Does it go on? It didn't even opt for leather. It's a cheap, awful. Oh, that's ridiculous. Anyway. That'd drive you insane. Diesel fuel. Insert diesel fuel only. Entertain yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've made it, you've made it angry. <laughs> Shut up! Shut it! Shut up! Does it, does it come with the mallet? <laughs> yeah, no, that's part of it. Now, uh, you know if you park your car in front of someone's drive in Britain, you get a polite notice saying, please don't park your car here anymore. OK, if you uh, live in Bratislava and you leave your car obstructing someone's drive, they react rather differently, as we see here. There's a pickaxe! Oh, pick <laughs> There's a survey out this week, OK, that says 25% of British men would rather be a passenger in a car with Jeremy Clarkson than with Angelina Jolie. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> let's, let's have a look at is... Ms Jolie, just so we can see what oh, we're on what? about here. <laughs> the world has gone mad. You're with me, aren't you? Yes, Jeremy. <laughs> He'd rather have me than no. her. <laughs> Quite I possibly. put that wrong. I'd have guessed that. Look at him. <laughs> Now listen, 25% of British men, I have been in a car with Jeremy Clarkson. To be honest, I haven't been in a car with Angelina Jolie, but I'm prepared to take a punt that Angelina Jolie is the better option. <laughs> uh, right, now, there's a new uh, motoring website come out. It's, uh, it's for homosexuals. Uh, <laughs> it's a motoring site for homosexuals. Do you know what they've called it? Top quiz. No, not top quiz. <laughs> They've actually called it, we've got it here, Top Gayer. <laughs> I That's like quite... Top Queer more. Yeah. Well, set up a rival one. The best thing about this, OK, because I went and checked this one out, and, uh, yeah, the editor is called Rich. Oh, come on, it's not... <laughs> no, he's put a, he's put a CV name. of himself in, and he says he lives in the Cotswolds. Well, yeah, I do. He's got a 4x4. Four four. Yes, I have, but they're, they're, look, they're, I'm not moonlighting as the editor of a gay website, OK? <laughs> he's got a dog. Yes, I've... It, look, it's not me. He's had his teeth whitened. I haven't had... <laughs> I have not had my teeth whitened. What, they've just become white? In the same way that yours have gone green. It's what, just... <laughs> <laughs> it just happens to your teeth. Anyway, listen. If you are a homosexual and you want to know about... <laughs> Cars, right to Richard Hammond, that sus <laughs> suspiciously neat house, <laughs> dog lane, the Cotswolds. Thank you. Now, remember in the last series we had a look at a car that Mercedes was going to base on a fish? Oh, yeah. Remember yeah, that, the that bionic one. car? Here's a picture of it, look. That's the fish that, that we're going to base that's it on. The, fish, yeah. Yeah. the car, the car looks like this, the bionic car. <laughs> <laughs> Still the fish. No, just... that, well, yeah, I mean, that's been designed in a wind tunnel to be like a fish. 
in they a say. A you can't tunnel. design something to look like a fish in a wind tunnel. Yes, you can. And they did. And they've built it and they've run it. It's been out on an industrial estate in Surrey yeah. where it's done 10 miles an hour. <laughs> What's the point of it? Well, it's got a um, sheep wee-wee system in it that goes into the exhaust and cleans up the emissions. Yeah, but what is the what point is of the car? If I'm going to buy a car that looks like that, I want the salesman to say, the reason you're driving a car that looks like this is because it does something. It did a lap of the industrial estate in 3 minutes 32 seconds. Was it a big lap? 0.6 miles. It's not very quick. Would anybody here buy that car? No. No, uh, but wait, no, 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 no. Can I get back to you? Yes. <laughs> like the Lamborghini Gallardo, do you? I like it. I just think it's a bit Audi-ish, because Audi own Lambo now, and it's just a bit... What, so you'd say it's a bit dull? It's a bit TT-ish. I've heard yeah. you say that. Right. Well, I defy you to tell me that this Lamborghini Gallardo is boring. It's the spider version, and it is. I think that looks absolutely... Yeah, exactly. Tell me that's I a boring I want to car. know everything about that. Well, I can tell you it's got a 520 brake horsepower, 10-cylinder uh, engine, V10. Ooh. Uh, it's 0 to 60, 4.3 seconds. Oh. Top speed, 195 miles an hour. It's not exactly slow. Costs 12% more than the hard top, £131,000, and I think that is absolutely good. That is a good. stunning looking I car. I mean, that's one of the best looking cars I've ever seen. I really want one of those. What? Right, the bionic <laughs> fish car. <laughs> Better be good. It better be good. It's got a 1.8 litre extremely efficient diesel engine. Everybody's with... got a diesel no, engine. Because this one's got sheet urine in it, and that means that the emissions are reduced by up to 80 percent, and yet strength and crash safety of the bionic shell is unaffected. So it's no safer, is what they're saying, than a normal car. It's a diesel car. You just have. I'm and sorry. It looks like that. And it looks like that. Take it away. I never want to see it again in my life, ever. <laughs> now, oh, now, Volvo has introduced a new convertible. Uh, we've got a picture of it here. There you are. Yeah, these things start from £27,000 up to 33. This is the T5 version. It's got a 220 brake horsepower, five-cylinder turbocharged engine. Best thing, though, is this roof, because, look, they've been to Ikea, haven't they? That is a flat-pack <laughs> roof. <laughs> That's very Tell it's Swedish. No, it's very good. Hey, Liberal Democrats have got it in for us. Um, they've actually summoned you, have they not, to the House of Commons to answer questions about our attitude to climate change. Yeah, and I'm not going because they'll just put a custard pie in my face. <laughs> they do, that's what they do. If you say, look, I don't really think that man is contributing uh, all that much to climate change, you get a lemon meringue in your fizz on. That's what it did in the summer. Boof, right now, in my face. Not this time. They're serious. It's all down to this MP, Tom Brake. He's their shadow transport minister. No, he isn't. And he is. He's the shadow. He isn't minister. the shadow. He's the shadow of a shadow. He's not really there. He's meaningless. No, look, well, either way, he has tabled an early day motion. And that... Oh, what? An early day motion. I don't want to oh. see a Liberal Democrat's early day motion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, yeah. oh, it'll be on leaf mulch. Oh. See that. Why don't you invite him to one of your early day motions? Oh. Yeah, kind of oh. Come in, Mr. Brakes, sit down, make yourself comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> make it two hours. That's oh. terrible. The Alfa Romeo Brea, remember that? It was in the studio last series. You two were getting a bit tumescent about it. Oh, it's fab. The Brea, it's just a fab Beautiful. car. Quite a nice looking car. I've got some more details on it. Let's have a look at it first. There you are. Very pretty. 2.2 litre version. Price will be £25,000. That's a lot. It is a lot. That's £3,000 more than a Mazda RX-8. 0 to 60, 8.6 seconds. That's, that's a lot, too. That's a lot. That's, sl that's slow, he means. In fact, it's the same as a 1976 Rover. Ooh, Still want one? <laughs> um, yes, yep, I do. Yep, we do. It's like Cameron Diaz, isn't it? We know that she's a vegetarian. We know she's a committed eco-mentalist. Would you say no? No. You might. <laughs> That is Cameron Diaz with wheels on, that is. 
Right, you know the new Mercedes S-Class, okay, has got this um, cruise control on it. It's like an active cruise control. Uh, we've got some footage here of how it works, okay? You're driving along, there's a radar in front of you, and it can sense if the car in front has stopped, or even if it is an emergency stop, and it will bring you to a big halt. So you don't crash. It's very clever, isn't so it? So you don't have to touch the brakes, it will just sense the car in front. Okay, now a German uh, TV company went to Mercedes and said, we'd quite like to film that happening, for real, if we may. So Mercedes said, yeah, come on down the factory, we'll set up an experiment for you, and you film it. And this is what happened. Here's the car, okay, out of the building, into the fog. Guy can see nothing. For the Germans. <laughs> oh, I'm feeling a little hot under my collar. <laughs> and they were German saying, I like the idea that once it had all settled and the fog had gone, a little German voice said, There you go, it stopped. <laughs> <laughs> well, it did. <laughs> now, this is very important. Suzuki, I think, may have come up with a car to replace our reasonably priced car, you know, our beloved Liana. Mm, yeah. It's very appropriate. It's small, it looks a bit cack, and it's ridiculous. Do you want to see it? Mm. Here it is. It's the Suzuki LC. <laughs> It's not good. You say it was called the LC. It's the LC. Oh, the LC. Because did, uh, did Tokyo Motor Show this year, they've really got into their stride on names for cars, the Japanese. I've got some here which I picked out, OK? This is called Mom's Personal Car. Well, that's his actual <laughs> name. Mom's <laughs> Personal Car. And there's a van, OK? You want to guess what that's called? Uh, uh, Dad's Personal Van? No, you're quite wrong. It's actually called the Vanus Hobio Travel Dog. Oh, okay. <laughs> Why didn't we guess? <laughs> and my absolute favourite, and there's a picture of it here, is the Honda Wonderful Open Hearted Wagon. Snappy! <laughs> Snappy! Thanks, great. And the dog! Perhaps it's a British one, look. They've got the Queen's dog there. Tell you what, though, best thing about that car isn't actually the name, it's the interior. You'll never guess what they've fitted it with inside, okay? Here it is. I don't know if you get the dog or if you bring your own dog. T I'd like to see you get my Great Dane in there. <laughs> <laughs>plastic cars okay they're in serious trouble financially they're bringing down mercedes and uh, chrysler the joint owners of them uh, but it doesn't matter because they've got a new car and here it is oh everything's okay everything's okay, everything's okay. Yeah, and now fine. take it away and bring angelina back That's better. <laughs> if smart made that their financial problems would be over we've launched a new car it's called the angelina <laughs> Okay, the news. And we're starting tonight uh, with some Christmas present ideas that we're not interested in. Absolutely. Here's something I'm not interested in. It is a tie. It gets worse. It says Skoda on it. Um, it's revolting. And that's why it's for you, Jeremy. Oh, you, you bought me a present. Yes. Ooh, that's really very unpleasant. Not as bad as yours. Oh, you no, no, I don't so want a tie with Skoda on it. <laughs> there we are. Let's got rid of that. What have you got? Uh, well, now, you know parking sensors? when you can have them fitted in the back bumpers of cars. If you've not tried it, it's just like a little radar, so as you reverse up to something, it goes beep, 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 and tells you how close you are so you yeah. don't hit it. Well, there's now a company that's making an aftermarket version. Because when you have them fitted to a car, they're like three, four hundred quid, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Well, here's an aftermarket version. This costs 15 quid. <laughs> Right. What are you going to trust about? <laughs> you see, it is a worry. 15 quid of the plastic and you're trusting your car. Not only that, but I looked at this a bit more closely and it turns out you don't attach this to your car. You attach this to the thing you're parking next to. <laughs> well, how does that work? Well, I don't know. I presume you sort of pull up, um, park, <laughs> get out, stick this on whatever you're parking next to and then... Park. Again. No, I think yeah. it's probably, isn't it, for your garage wall at home, so you know how close you are yeah, to it. Yeah, it is, but there's another thing. It's, it's battery-powered, so at some point you are going to come home, the battery will be flat, and you're going through the wall. That's going to happen. <laughs> we get literally no letters a week, uh, every week, from people saying, look, I want to go to work, but I want to leave a trail of blue and red smoke in my wake while I'm going along. 
Yes, it's not easy if you can't afford a red arrow or if you have no ability to fly one. However, help is now at hand from Japan, where they've come out with these. These tyres, they say, if you spin them, will emit coloured smoke. <laughs> Yeah, now the thing was, is that this morning, to test this out, we bolted some of those tyres to the back of a TVR, put the stick in it, and this is what happened. There he is, look, and away he goes. Oh, look! Oh, hey! Now, we are told... That's like a red arrow. It is. We are told that these tyres do affect handling and performance somewhat, and braking. <laughs> oh, yeah, but what a way to arrive at work. Yeah, look, at, look at the stick. He's, he's sort of enjoying himself in there, is he? Look at him. <laughs> That's a happy stick. I'm a red arrow, I'm not a stick. <laughs> look at me. <laughs> They're about, uh, what, 200 quid a pop, aren't yeah, they? they? 200 are. quid. So if you want to do that, there you go. They could use those when they need a new Pope. What, and they have the coloured smoke? <laughs> yeah, up the chimney. What, so you get some little Italian pikey in his Fiat Uno in a fireplace somewhere in the Vatican? Is he ready? Yeah, right, now! <laughs> <laughs> now put Angelina back. Mm. Uh, now, there is some talk at the moment about the BBC dumbing down. Yeah. <laughs> So, we're going to try and do something about that. Sorry, mate. <laughs> so, do be warned that this next item may contain some information.